share these images, and then you can tell us all about them. That was a big lag. That is a big lag. <laughs> and there it goes again. We're just going to be hearing ourselves in retrograde now. I know. What's up with that? Okay, there. Maybe I can't do that. Oh, no, I know how to do this. Live and learn. <laughs> it's all so I, an adventure. I asked I asked A.T. for her actual first name so I could call her something other than A.T. And she says her name is Inigo Montoya. We killed her father. Prepare to die. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So. All right. So I am now sharing. Oh, you did it. I am sharing a screen. Nice. Ooh, I think everyone can see fancy. that. <laughs> so uh, this is your cookbook that you took this out of? Yes, that the reason, the whole reason I bought that cookbook is because I have a friend who's from New Orleans, and she made this jambalaya, and um, it was delicious. And I was like, "You have to share your recipe for jambalaya with me." And she's like, "Well, then you have to buy the cookbook." <laughs> <laughs> and it's a great cookbook. It really is. If you like Creole or Cajun cooking, it's fantastic. We make yeah. a lot of things out of there. Andrew is going to be very, very excited, and I'm going to show everybody why he's going to be very excited. So is this a jambalaya? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yummy. With yeah. chicken and andouille, and we add tomatoes. I guess mm. tomatoes are controversial in jambalaya. Some people say yes, some people say no. Really? We did tomatoes. Yeah. Tomatoes are controversial? In jambalaya. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Oh, those controversial fruits. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for not saying that ketchup is a vegetable. <laughs> I appreciate that. So so I didn't realize that that was a thing in jambalaya world. That's, yeah. um Andrew loves jambalaya. He, he can do spicy, and I'm not so good with the spicy. Yeah, well, this one, it's... I don't think any jambalaya must be very difficult. But this one is... it's. It's really simple and it's easy to make a huge batch of it in the afternoon and then you have it for dinner throughout mm -hmm. the week. It's really nice. We use it a lot. I like that. And I also really like... Blood oranges. Blood oranges. <laughs> so you said that this particular crop that you've got access to is super crazy good? Yeah, and it's just they're the ones from Trader Joe's, so I would assume other people have access to them as well. Ooh. But they are... Just this crazy, they're this crazy color. They're almost purpley red, and yeah. they taste like Jolly Ranchers. <laughs> I oh think God. they taste like Jolly Ranchers. They're delicious. <laughs> I think I think I'm gonna have to drive all the way out to Trader Joe's. Ours is way far away from us, but it might be worth it. <laughs> I know. We have one on our way to and from school, which is actually really bad because whenever they get like, they'll get a really great batch of berries in or whatever, and all of a sudden I'm stopping twice a day to buy pints of berries. Because what are or you supposed blood, to do? Right, or blood oranges because, I don't know, for my kids, fruits are kind of like books. I have a hard time saying, don't eat the berries. You ate too many. I know, right, because they're good for them. Yeah, please eat the fruits. <laughs> Put the Twinkie down. Right, Pick eat the, up yeah. the fruit. Yeah. Just don't eat $3 worth of fruit all at once. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I have a 15-year-old and a 13-year-old and a 10-year-old, so <laughs> I could be spending $3 on way worse things for them. <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I hear you. And probably have. Yeah. That's <laughs> Yes. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. I yeah. what do you what do you use your blood oranges for? We just eat them. We just cut them in slices and eat them a lot. Um but marmalade, they make stunning marmalade. Oh, I yeah, have because that. you get the you get the um contrast of the orange rind with the ruby red color. It's beautiful. And if you want a marmalade recipe, Alton Brown's marmalade recipe is the best. Really? All the browns, yes. everything is oh, it's It true. is. It's so easy, and it is perfect every single time. I got the boys hooked on that when they were very small. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they started saying, can we watch the food scientist? Yep. Yes, we can. <laughs> yes, you can, as much as you want. Yeah. yeah. Did, you, did you ever listen to him on um, Judge John Hodgman's podcast? No. no. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm going to have to post the link to this episode. <laughs> I talked about it at the time. But it was a mother, a mother and her adult daughter were having, they brought their lawsuit to Judge John Hodgman 
because there was a controversy over how to do canning properly. Ah. And the mother did it the way that a I was taught to do it. A lawsuit about this? What? A lawsuit about canning. Well, you know, it's Judge John Hodgman, so it's people have to abide by the rulings of his court, which is, you know, he may tell you to go take out the laundry. You know, you don't know what he's going to come up with as a, a finding at the end. Right. So the the mother does her, uh, does her canning the way that I learned how to do it, which is, uh, very simple. Boiling everything is plenty, and you kind of go from there. And the daughter had done all this research and had gone scientific on it and she had her whole thing and she kept saying her mom was doing it wrong and in point of fact claimed that her mother caused her husband um, uh, gave him food poisoning from a, a batch of salsa that they made Ooh. so judge John Hodgman said alright well I <clears throat> I need an expert witness because I don't know from canning <laughs> so uh, Alton uh, Brown was his expert witness and I'm not going to tell you what Alton had to say about canning, but I felt I felt pretty good by the end of the episode. And he did. He figured out how the husband had gotten food poisoning. Nice. Mm -hmm. I figure any any cook, chef, TV personality who will show up on John Hodgman's <laughs> he rates pretty high in my book. Nice. That's funny. Yeah, they had one of his early episodes was called um, "Tear Down This Wall," and it was about breaking the fourth wall in Hamlet, and, and whether that was okay or not. There were two friends who were arguing about this, and they they brought their case to Judge John Hodgman. Okay, then. Right. What channel is this on? I've never heard of this. It's it's his own. He's got a podcast like ours. Well, he started podcast. on um, uh, Maximum Fun, I think. But in the beginning, they were, they were as low budget as we've ever been. I it's see. Been, it's been fun. They well, you'll have to put a link to it in the show notes. I will. I will, because it was it was about an hour long, and you learn a lot about canning and the mechanics of the heating and the cooling and the sterilization and all that stuff. Because Alton Brown knows that stuff, so. Well, it just sounds amusing in general, like something craft letters would like. Yeah. Uh, smart, smart, funny, funniness. Yeah. Yeah. Tongue firmly planted in cheek. Yes. Yes. Well, and he, he does swear them in. He has his bailiff. So it's kind of like Judge Judy or, or the old Judge Wapner, right. Rusty the bailiff, who's, I, I don't know where they are. I assume John Hodgman is recording from wherever he happens to be, and this other guy's in Atlanta. And they get everybody together on Skype, and that's how they do their courtroom. Yeah. Interesting. Plus, John Hodgman is really fast. <laughs> thinking. Nice. Yeah. He comes out with some very interesting stuff. But, Erica, did you have any food to add to the food porn? Uh, you know, I should have sent you a picture. I made something awesome last night. Um, it looked beautiful. It was a little underdone, but it was gorgeous anyway. The big, huge hunk of pork. Um, but hopefully next time I'll have some homemade sausage or something to show you. You do homemade sausage? Uh, and Andrew does homemade sausage. Um, for the listeners, both Heather and I are married to men named Andrew, but not the same man. Um, <laughs> it's good to distinguish the two. Good to distinguish. Um, it actually, he... Uh, his most recent effort was he did he cold smoked a big hunk of cheddar cheese. Whoa! And, and uh, yeah, you can smoke without heat, and um, it was so good. I'm, what, I'm what amazed there's any of it left. I, I, it's his secret. I don't know, but he had he got a special cold cold smoking attachment for his smoker for his birthday, um, and he broke it in this past week. With this just giant hunk of cheddar cheese. I'm I'm so sorry. That has to be just such such a difficult thing for you to have to live through. <laughs> well, the uh, the awesome thing um, about the uh, sausage making is we know he can control exactly what's in it, which means he can make sausages I can eat. Um, 
since I don't eat sugar, since right. I don't eat sugar, most commercial sausages are off limits to me because they've got some form of sugar in them, whether they call it sugar or call it something else. Right. Um, so I, the first time he made kielbasa, I was just over the moon. It was like, oh my gosh, I haven't had kielbasa in six years. This is awesome. Um, and he makes chorizo and Italian sausage and breakfast sausage. And um, sometimes he makes ones that I can't eat, but that's okay. And he, um, did, he goes hunting, right? I mean, some of this stuff is, is things that he's caught. Uh, it hasn't been yet. He hasn't hunted the last two um, waterfowl seasons, but he's going to do um, turkey season. Oh, before I forget, Tammy Burke is frantically waving her hand saying, hello, hello, hello. Yay. Um, Hi, Tammy. And, and Miss Thursday Adams agrees that smoking cheese is good fun. Um, Does she is, have a cold smoker? I don't know. Let's see. Miss Thursday Adams, do you have a cold smoker? Um, but he's he's smoked in the smoker. He's done all kinds of stuff. Ooh ooh, Tammy says the um, Madame Defarge book came up on Marley's podcast today. Tammy, which Madame Defarge book? Which one? There are only five to choose from. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, Thursday does not have a smoker. She doesn't now that she lives in the UK. Oh. oh. Uh, you know, there are trade-offs. There the are trade-offs. People's Republic of Wales. Cold smoker live in UK, you know. Right. Right. Well, actually, I'm glad she's here because I got an email today, and I'm going to share the screen again because this blew my mind. I got a freak email out of the blue. From a guy named, I know, freak email, what? From a guy named Paul. And Paul sent me this and said, um, we have this, I mean, really out of the blue, he just said, hey, I think your readers might be interested in this. And I thought, hmm, how did you find me? And he, he gave me this link and he said, this is an interactive map. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, okay, well, I'm always curious to see how these kinds of things work. So I am just going to click oh, look at your cursor moving around. the little side thing because I could click on the buttons over Ireland, but instead I'm just going to click over here and you'll see. So it's got the history of wool spinning in Dublin. And then you go north and hand weaving. Ah. And it goes through it goes through all these fabulous textiles in Ireland with these gorgeous pictures, and um, and he actually I was like well there has to be something going on here, he is from Murphy of Ireland's and he, I'm looking at the pictures of Donegal because that just that yeah. doesn't suck at all, but he sent a link to their nightshirt page and I think this is how he found me because we bought Aiden a nightshirt with with the little cap. That Wait a minute, did it tell the whole world that you bought something from there? Mm -mm, no. Oh, oh, okay. No, I, I just think, wondered how I think he could find you. I, I couldn't figure out any other way but we got a little, you know, little cap for the boy and a little nightshirt. Oh, Aren't those adorable? And so he's, I wrote back to him and said, uh, I'm pretty confident that the listeners are going to be really happy because I can live stream it now and show everybody what this thing is. So, and I will um, link to it. Thursday asks Ballymena. I hope I said that right. Is that a place that would be <laughs> on that map, Ballymena? Okay. Let me see if it's on the map. It may be. Uh, ooh, I have to go back to the beginning. Um. Go hmm. back to the beginning. I know. <laughs> I can't. Mina, talk. oh Balimina, excuse me, excuse me. Ask Pardon her me. if that's north or south, because I don't know my. Thursday is that north or south? I'm not sure. Is it Belfast? Oh, this is actually the one I wanted everybody to see. Hang on. This is pretty. Pretty is good. Oh my goodness! Right, that. Uh, she says it's north of Belfast. Then they might. He may have something from there. But that crocheted lace, 
That's ridiculous. Right? How beautiful is that? It's amazing. I love that. And then that one. You people who are listening and not watching are missing out. This is some ridiculous looking lace. I know. I'm going to. In a good way. I'm going to go ahead and, and post the, the link to this in um, in the show notes so people can, can click on Ooh, it. Oh, I like that one. Play around themselves. But isn't that beautiful? And this is the, the Poor Claire Nuns in Ken Marin County Cary, which is, I think, where my stepmom is from. Because it's close to Cork. Okay. Oh, ho, ho. Right? Uh, apparently, Ballymena is famous because of Liam Neeson. Oh, is it now? And uh, everyone agrees that the lace is beautiful that you're showing. Yeah, it really does. Oh, there's Ballymena right there. And there isn't anything attached to it. But maybe they can. Oh, it's the birthplace of Liam Neeson. The birthplace of Liam Neeson. Well, we can all pilgrimage to that for a different reason other than wool. So they they may not produce fancy lace, but they produce Liam Neeson. And that, that is fine with me. That counts. I like him. My son has been trying to learn how to do Sean, what's his face, who does Family Guy? Um, I can't remember his name. But he did on the Graham Norton show, I think, he did Kermit the Frog doing Liam Neeson's speech from <laughs> I Will Find You. And But he does it as Kermit the Frog, and it's awesome. I love it. It's important to be able to do ridiculous voices. So, John, yes. do you have any artistic craftiness to share? <laughs> I was waiting for you to ask, <laughs> because this is really funny. Uh -oh. No, you had told me when you proposed this whole thing that because people want to know how you're in back of the chair stash is coming, right? <laughs> <laughs> so after we talked about all the Briar Rose last week, I was like, I should just pull out all my Briar Rose projects and see. <laughs> None of them were behind the chair, but there are a lot of them. <laughs> 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 this is crazy. So there's the sweater I showed you last week. Mm -hmm. And then, so I started, I gave up on the one yarn, and I'm going to be using this for the vest. That's Briar, a Briar Rose that's called Celebrity. Um, so that's new. But I have that sweater that I ripped back. <laughs> and I have, let's see, this, which is a crochet and... It's a crochet and knitting mashup. That's beautiful. Um, and this is her Sea Pearl. Wow. It's, it's really sunny here today, so I'm it not going to be able to get you guys colors. Um, because, you know, it's glaring off all the white yeah. stuff outside. <laughs> Very bright. Um, and then, what else? There's a bunch of spinning. <gasps> this is a bunch of leftovers. Does Briar Rose do fiber as well? Yeah, she has... Um, her two fibers right now are generally BFL and Polworth. Um, but I have this one. <laughs> this one wow. is some... Uh, Coriadale that she had done a while ago. It's beautiful. I love those colors. Yeah, it's really lovely. Then I'm going to chain ply this one. <laughs> On this spindle, <laughs> we have some pull work. Wow. Oh, I like those colors. Yeah, I like them too. Those are nice. Um, that's what the little blobs look like. You kind of if I, oh. oh, pretty. There, you can kind of see. Wow. Um, it's really fluffy. I like her pull worth a lot. So that's the... Oh, there's one more. <laughs> one spinning. That's, there's one more spinning project. So this will make... Four. <laughs> this is also some of her pull work. Her colors are just always so gorgeous. They are. And I have this, some of this. Everybody say goodbye to Anne. She has to go. Her lunch Bye, break Anne. is over. Bye, Anne. Bye. I have a little egg of this on the Nosta pin that was on another spindle. Those are pretty. Nice. So that's that's the spinning. Now hang on. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> I have one leg warmer. <laughs> because the other leg warmer has been like this for two years. <laughs> I feel better. Well, don't you know an amputee Wait. you can give it to? <laughs> <laughs> They're supposed to be for my daughter. 
Okay, hang on. And then this is a triangular shawl of some type that I don't even remember what the pattern is anymore, so I don't know how I'm going to finish it. <laughs> but it's pretty. It's very pretty, and it's multiple colors of Chris's yarn. <laughs> so I'll have to figure it out eventually. Did you put uh, anything on Ravelry about it? Do you have any record there? You know, I didn't look because I just pulled it out of the nowhere lands today. So maybe I do have it somewhere. Is that all of them? Maybe. This is awesome. That might be all of them. <laughs> it's making me want to go and pull the Vogue map of the world Afghan out. Ooh, and this is new. I haven't started these yet. But my daughter, for Christmas... Chris is dying sock blanks now. <gasps> oh. Aren't they cool? Those are awesome. I know. Oh. You know what's interesting is you have a whole lot of those kind of rusts and yellows <laughs> and <laughs> greens. autumnal colors. Yeah. But you're wearing all of the ocean colors. Yeah. Well, this, yeah, Noro. That's kind of what, the way I go with Noro. But Chris's, well, Chris's palette is all very autumnal. Today must be Noro Day. I'm wearing Noro, too. <laughs> oh, wait. Uh, Hang on. I've got to put you up. Oh, you have Noro on, too. I do. I nice. Do. So cool. And, oh, I have my cup, my mug that looks just like that one. <laughs> Sheeps. Yep. I've got my... Hang on. I'm going to take that off. I've got my... got to hold it up higher. Can't see. But, oh. Ah. Hold on. Look. There's my spindle. You had a spindle, too. There's mine. I do. Oh. Where did mine go? <laughs> mine also has a crochet hook. See it? Oh. I have, I have the California bear one. <laughs> it's just a Jenny the Potter Fest today here yes. on Craft except, except I can't use it as a mug because I don't know if you can see the big crack. Oh. It lasted a month before I cracked it, so now it's just a decoration. Yeah, my, my Craftlet mug finally started to... Um, it started to get one crack down down one side, and I thought, mm, I don't want to risk that. So it's <laughs> holding my pencils, and it's next to me all the time now. So Nice. Yes, because I love it. I love it too. And I have another mug of hers from Maryland from a few years ago that I... Oh, with the Krabby Krabs on it? That I can use, yeah. So that one's good. Although today well, I have crafty too. What do you I have? I have crafty too. I got. I was prepared this time and kept a list through the week. Um, oh, you're good. So well, trying. Um, so I don't know uh, if you guys listen to Brass Needles, but every February, Miss um, Calendar does finishuary, where you finish up. You take projects that were started before February first, and you finish them before March first. Or at least make really good progress on them, and there's prizes and whatever. And since I'm between work projects, I uh, decided to do that. So, cool. I'm I've pulled out my my poor lonely socks from last February that clearly are far from being done. Um, but they taught me that I can't do. Plain yarn and a plain pattern at the same time. Oh boy! If I'm Do doing I? a yes. plain pattern, I need interesting yarn. If I'm doing plain yarn, I need an interesting pattern. If I do plain vanilla yarn and plain vanilla pattern, I want to poke my eyeballs out. Mm -hmm. So yes. one day these will go to the person they're for. And then I have this Entrelac scarf that I started in 2014. Ooh. Speaking of Noro. <gasps> I don't know if you can see all the crazy colors. Noro is perfect for Entrelac. It's yes, it is. Just, so this is uh, Korean sock, which you know I wouldn't use for socks because it's not super wash and it's a little delicate, but um, it sure is great for this. That's awesome. And then, then the blanket that I gave my daughter for Christmas 2014 and didn't start until January 2016... As you can see, I have a long way to go. Wow. And it's very wide. She, of course, wanted the... It comes in three sizes, and, of course, she wanted the biggest size, which is, well, yeah. you know, about five feet wide. So. How much yarn is going to go into that sucker? About a whole bag of Barocco Vintage. That wow. better be enough, because wow. that's all I'm using. <laughs> How will that needle? 
It's a it's a five foot needle. Wow. Good old knit picks interchangeables. So yeah, that's commitment. Or committable. So those, yeah, yeah, exactly. I know. I what was I thinking? I don't I don't promise them knitted items anymore because I just don't follow through. Yeah. So if I want to knit them something, I'll surprise them. Um, yeah, I stopped. I stopped promising knitted goods to the family a while ago. Oh my God, it's snowing again. <laughs> We're supposed to be getting hammered uh, between now and tomorrow morning, so I've been waiting for it to start. And now it started. Yay. It's doing all the fluffy, floaty stuff too. It's kind of doing. Well, so that's what I have. Uh, so, are plus... you going to try and do all of those in February? Um. I would like to finish the socks in February because <laughs> they were supposed to be my February socks from last year when I w had planned to participate in the Knit from Stash knit along where you bag up 12 different batches of yarn and each month you pull a bag and you don't know what you're pulling and then you knit a pair of socks with that yarn. Yeah, well, I didn't get past February so because um, that was my February yarn. So I'd like to finish that so that I can just finally give them to the person whose birthday is in August that they go to. Um, and uh, I'd like to finish the Entrelac scarf, too. The, the blanket won't get finished, but I want to make measurable progress. The Notice Entrelac the looked like it was way, way close to I, it's, closer. It's, uh, it's way far along, yeah. It's... Uh, I gotta look up. I don't remember how. I think I'm. I think I'm almost two skeins of yarn in. I have a whole nother skein I could use, but it's about. It's it's pretty far along. Yeah. Oh, uh, about about four feet tall, maybe. So it's That's coming good. along. I all I managed to do was work more on the the sock yarn shawl, but but I worked more on the sock yarn shawl. So last week it was just dinky, and this week, yay, yay. And it's it was interesting, Don, because I um I used to crochet a lot more than I knit, and so I my hand is more used to doing crochet, but I never learned how to read crochet the way that I learned how to read knitting. So I, I don't think it just even occurred to me at the time that I could. And then Aiden was asking me about crocheting and stuff like that, and I found that. Nice. Ah. And I'm realizing, visual learner, that had I had something like that when I was in my 20s and crocheting all the time, I think I would have learned how to read it much faster. But because I hadn't, it took me... Um, what I showed you guys last week I had to rip out because I realized when I got to the fifth round that I'd done something really wrong and so I pulled it back and it was it was that the instruction was assuming that you understood one location when she said uh, to double crochet in each in each stitch and chain one space. She didn't mean each stitch, she meant each double crochet stitch and chain one space is separate. So if you had chain ones that... Anyway, I went back and I got it done. <laughs> and and nice. now, it, now it makes sense and now I can read it and I can see where all the pieces are and that's fun. Very good. Oh. You know what? Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> because that shawl... No way. I have one too. <laughs> <laughs> then I had started mm, last summer, I think. How long? And that's more narrow. That's beautiful. Yeah, this one's with. It's really, you know, it's like the Oof. super thin lace narrow. But yeah, no. Now I need to finish it because I can crochet along with you while I listen to. The Count of Monte Cristo. I know, right? So, yeah. wait, how that thing isn't done? It's huge already. Yeah, no, it's not. Let's see, how much do I have left? 
Oh, I could make it really big if I wanted, because I have about that much, wow. and then I have a whole other one. So I could make like a blanket. <laughs> Where are you? And what yarn it? is that? Which noro is that? Which noro is that? That is Kira Makey. K I R A M E K I. It is rayon, nylon, wool, and cashmere. Oh darn! Nice. Shucks. <laughs> but yeah, it's really fine. Um. And I actually bought it for crocheting because I actually, um, because Noro is a single, I, it's one of my favorite um, crochet yarns because it, the spin is right. Yeah, and it doesn't yeah. do that nasty splitty thing at the tip of your hook. Right, yep. She said, having done the nasty splitty thing at the tip of your hook. <laughs> Many times now. Uh-huh, yeah, I'd forgotten all about that. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that was... I'm trying to think if that was the only thing I managed to do. Oh, I darned some socks. Oh, darn it. Did you, did you darn them or did you darn them into the trash? No, no, I actually darned them. I like darning socks. I'm Something is wrong with me, I know. But I Nothing even have, is like, wrong with you. I have a giant... Make, do, and mend. It's right. I have a giant long needle that I like. I mean, you can see it up against my hand. It is, is a giant long needle. But it's the right pointiness and width to be able, when you have the, the egg, the sock on the egg or on, on a light bulb if you couldn't find your egg, Heather, <laughs> that it was exactly the right length to be able to not have to struggle. So I could weave, I could weave that sucker in there and fix it all up. Nice. I also hemmed some, you know how you can get those cheap mittens at the store now? They, they're like the dollar mittens, the stretchy ones. I went around the fingers on some of these and um, with that needle and and a cigar tube and turned some into fingerless mittens so they wouldn't unravel. Ah. The boy That's wanted smart. some. So that was that was crafty. Yeah. You had a very crafty week. I did. Mm -hmm. I did. And I... Tammy says goodbye, by the way. She had to go. Hi Tammy. She had to go back to work. Tammy saw us. I know. She has to. She's always doing stuff. Funny how we seem to attract people like that. Hmm. Super productive, overly busy, amazing people. EDD obsessive people? What? <laughs> I did not say obsessive. <laughs> I just found a really, really good book on EDD adults by, written by a guy who's a therapist who was diagnosed when he turned 65. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Yeah. And he and his wife had not, she knew that he drove her crazy, and he knew that she, he was driving her crazy, but they couldn't figure out what the problem was. And they had worked out all these different strategies to deal with it on their own, and so once they got a diagnosis and he started reading up on it, he said, oh, wow, okay, well, this was what we did for this, and this is what we did for this. So the whole book is nothing but strategies. Nice. Yeah, it's actually, it's actually useful. Uh, put the link in the show notes, please. Oh, yes. I um, am going to, because it's... I uh, think I know someone who would like to read that book. So. Yep. yep. And I, I like the guy's attitude, because he starts off by saying, look, I'm going to mention some strategies that are just not going to work for you, and that's fine. But maybe you can take it and tweak it and make it work for you. Or, or um, he said at one point that he was going to wind up... Uh, talking about spirituality because that was very important to him and he didn't want that to be off-putting to anyone but at the same time he wanted people to see that the it didn't have to be necessarily a religion or a particular spiritual practice as long as there was something that you were doing that allowed you time to kind of center yourself so he's he's really laid back and easygoing about all of it which I also appreciated because everybody's different and some stuff that's worked for friends hasn't worked for me at all. So. Well, we have a second on the link to the book, so you, you have to now. There's more Yay. than just me saying the link to it. Thursday Yay. says the link to it. Oh, good. I will. I'll put it in, uh, in the show notes, and then um, as soon as the show notes go up on Friday, I transfer the Crafty Talk show notes to the YouTube channel, so everything will be there together. Cool. And we have good chapters this week. Yay. Mm-hmm. 
we get to meet our bad guys. Well, nice. some of them. There are so many. <laughs> well, I want to put yeah. I want to put in a plug. As long as we're being crafty, uh, we do have just a couple weeks left of of February for people to get in their submissions for Defarge to Sherlock. That's right. So, and we would love to see some more crochet patterns, um, especially. The, and we're going to have a hard time, the board will have a hard time deciding because there's a lot of gorgeous stuff. So it's oh, going darn. to be a really great book. Um, so we will, we will have a hard time choosing. Sherlock, Sherlock seemed to have inspired a lot of really interesting stuff that I would never in a million years have thought of. Yeah, definitely. I love that. Creative people. And my other plug is that if people are going to Stitches West, which is not this weekend, but next weekend, look for me. I will be there. Um, I will be most of Friday and pretty much all of Sunday at the Dizzy Blonde Studios booth. Um, and uh, Saturday and Thursday I'll be floating around. Um, but I will be there the whole time from Thursday afternoon till till Sunday when things wrap up. And if people bring their Defarge books, you will even sign them. I will. Um, we're, I will not be in the Bijou Basin booth this year because there will be no Bijou Basin booth this year, um, unfortunately. So it, it has yet to be seen if I'm going to be in any booth doing book sales slash signing. But I will be floating around, and I will, I will have a mini-me with me for most of the time also. I will have one of my minions. So... Um, do you, that will be fun too. Do you know where your booth that you're going to be at? Do you know where it is located in the grand I, scheme of things? It is. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, we can link booth, to that too. Booth number ten thirty three. Cool. Ten thirty three, which will also be uh, right next to Lux Adorna Knits, which used to be called Pepperberry Knits, and one of my samples will be in there. Um, oh, cool! So people can see I, your stuff. Right, because I knit a, um, I, I published a pattern with the Lux Adorna yarn. It's 100% cashmere. And so that will be in the Lux Adorna booth. And then um, my fangirl shawl will be in the Dizzy Blonde booth. So cool. Uh, along with me and, and Abby. This is the uh, Lux Adorna. Whoa. So it's a cowl. I was just going to say, is that double knit? But No, no, it's not double knit. I haven't figured double knit out yet. Um, Ooh, double knit is fun. It is. Yeah, I, t I took a Lucy Neat Bead class but didn't finish it. But no, it's got, it's got floaty floats. So. Your floats are pretty too. Well, thank you, thank you. Don, I think I can hear your dog. Is God, that what that actually, is? And can you hear him snoring? <laughs> yes, that's I exactly what I thought it sounded like. Was yeah, snoring. Gus is snoring. He's laying in the sun. <laughs> Snoozy. Well, he's, not, he's not even on your lap. He isn't. No, he's over there. And I actually put the other in her room because she, the longer we have her, the more of her personality is coming out. <laughs> And she has definitely decided she is, she is a lap dog, so literally she would have been, like, right here the whole time. <laughs> just breathing yeah. into the camera? Yeah, I would have got, I tried to get her settled earlier, and I just couldn't, she just kept coming right here. So I was like, all right, gotta go away. <laughs> we yeah. actually, we had a, we had a animal freak out this week. Um, our cat. We, um, what day was it? Oh, it was Friday. Of course it was Friday. It was Friday afternoon because all illnesses happen, whether children Friday. or animals, on Friday afternoon. Her eyelid was super swollen and looked like she may have rubbed the fur off of it. I couldn't tell. Wow. Yeah, it was kind of scary because it was all of a sudden. And I called, well, I looked online, which actually wasn't such a bad thing to do to try and get a, a scope for what it possibly could be. So I was able to call the vet and say, uh, hi, we haven't ever seen a vet up here because we haven't needed to, and so I have a cat, too. And they were awesome. They're like, can you bring her in now? I'm like, it's, wow. it's like 
5.30 on a Friday night. And they said, well, yeah, can you bring her in now? Y yeah. So I raced over there and they did a really thorough evaluation and the doctor looked at everything and finally he said, you know, the only thing that makes any sense is maybe it's a spider bite. Oh. Hmm. And I thought I would never have gone there. So mm -hmm. cool. And he gave her a Benadryl shot and 24 hours later she was fine. Wow. Sounds like it was a spider bite then. Wow. Yep. It, st it looked like it was starting to swell up again. Aaron got kind of worried and said, oh, I think it's coming back, but she's fine. Wow. Nice. Nice bet. But I was thinking of you and thinking, oh. Animals. <laughs> yes, animals. Definitely. And we should, I should actually be getting a phone call. My vet is meeting with the rescue people today to discuss our situation. <laughs> and all the, the different things that she's going to need. Yeah. Yeah to see what we can do for her. So. Is she working out with your other dog though? Yeah, they're working out their business and actually I think um, I think she's settling up on top and he's a little bit, he's always at the bottom of the pack. <laughs> he just is, he's so submissive. Um, it's kind of funny but she was, um, yesterday, he was laying in the sun again and he was kind of chewing on one of his toys and she snuck under the coffee table, grabbed the tail of the toy and like yanked it back and then ran over to her bed. <laughs> oh my gosh. And did he do anything? No, he just sat there and looked at me like, she took my toy. <laughs> I love that like, look. You're such a baby. <laughs> How old is he? He's uh, either six or seven. Yeah. But, yeah, he's just, he's such a big dope. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. That yeah. Is. I was thinking he would maybe come say hi, but no, there's a sunbeam, so he is firmly planted where he is. You can just hear him. <laughs> Serenading. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, that that is what we should all be so lucky to do. <laughs> yeah. to Snooze in the sun. <laughs> yeah. Go yeah. up in the sunshine. Really. Which we are not going to get any of today. That's because it's all here. It's here too. It's like 71 here. It's you always have fun. No, we don't. And we're the, really every February we get like a week or two where it gets like all really nice and stuff, and everybody breaks out their shorts and their flip flops and their short sleeves, and then it goes back to the rainy season. So I'm hoping it goes back to the rainy season because we the drought is not over yet. So no. um, I would I would rather have have rainy than 71 degrees in February. So and lo and lots of snow but in the mountains. I'm weird. Yes, snow in the mountains would be would be fabulous. Yeah. Um, oh, and one other thing I forgot to mention is in on Ravelry in the in the group on Ravelry I started a thread for people to put what they would like to hear about in Crafty Chat because okay. uh, there there will be weeks when we don't have much to report. So um, I started a what would you like to hear about thread um, inspired by the Knitwork Girls. They have a thread in their group for the same thing. So, so we'll see what people come up with. Yeah. Very cool. Very, very cool. Well, on that note, I will let you guys go. All right. And we can all get back to whatever dangerous stuff we were getting up to before. <laughs> Yeah, I gotta get take my kid in to see if she's got strep. So, oh, no fun. Lots of fun. Not not the one that had mono. This is the other one. So, <laughs> because you can't win. No, but so far, knock on knock on wood, I haven't gotten sick. I'm the only one in the family who hasn't. So, wow. Yeah, you sound good. But you know, for the moment. But you know, smoke and mirrors, smoke and mirrors. <laughs> I understand that too. All right. We'll take care, you guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye